longer statement previously made it through. Hello, Here, everyone. Uh, Welcome back to another episode of our... I was about to say Shattered Earth, but no, this is our Glacier Ridge campaign. Hey, it's only been one episode. That's that's fine. I gotta just listen to the music, and I know I'm in Glacier Ridge. Um, welcome back. This is our Monster of the Week campaign. Uh, this is our, well, it's my first time playing in a different TTRPG setting. Um... Monster of the Week is a Powered by the Apocalypse system. Uh, basically, it's based on your your favorite Monster of the Week TV series. Uh, X-Files, Supernatural, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, stuff like that. Basically, the ones that they just came across a different paranormal type monster or UFO or whatever along the way. Um, so yeah, that's what this is. Um, just a quick rundown as to what Glacier Ridge is. So, uh, we didn't record this, but we had made a campaign before, that's where most of us met, uh, known as Descindia. Now, Descindia was an entire world, an entire planet, and I ran a campaign in that. And then I'm like, wow, that was a big mistake. I'm going to try and run a campaign in Texas. Uh, also a big mistake because Texas is massive. Now I've gone to a town. <laughs> uh, and that's where this campaign is going to be taking place. So it's, uh, next campaign is going to be like in some person's backyard. It's, it's one person's house. <laughs> yeah. Um, in one room. Yeah. So, uh, basically, the campaign is a uh, group of paranormal investigators. They are part of a TV or internet TV series known as The Search. They did a bunch of research over the past two years, and they found out there was a lot of weird goings-on in a place in the Northwest Territories of Canada known as Nahani Valley. Uh, Nahani Valley is a real location in the Northwest Territories in Canada. Um, Glacier Ridge, however, where this campaign is going to be taking place, is not a real location. Glacier Ridge is about a two-hour hike, three-hour hike from the Nahani National Park. Uh, normally, you have to go to Nahani National Valley from a completely different source. You have to either fly in or uh, like ATV in or something. It's very hard to get to. I didn't want to make our players do that every single game. So I was like, you know what? We're going to make up a town that's nearby. That way we're not going to offend anybody, hopefully. And we're all good. Anyway, so... That is the basis of this campaign. Last week, we pretty much did just an introduction to this campaign. We introduced our players, did job interviews for all of our players uh, and their characters, and yeah, we started our campaign. Uh, they spent the night setting up uh, at their hotel. They're staying at the Nahani Lodge. I think it's just called the Nahani Lodge. Give me one second here. Uh, yeah, just the Nahani Lodge. Um, it's basically a large wood cabin type building. Um, but yeah, they each got their own room. Um, Wyatt got his own room, even though he was part of the crew before. But he likes his alone time. Um, and then the crew spent the nights by themselves. Um... The Nahani Lodge also has like banquet halls and things like that. The crew has rented out the banquet hall to be your guys' home base. So they are going to be home base location at the Nahani Lodge. The hotel rooms is where they're going to be sleeping. And they can go out into the forest and do the searches out there. Anyway, so you all awaken in your rooms after a good night's sleep. And you take some time getting ready showering if you choose to i guess 
I know when I was 14, I wasn't showering every single day, but you know, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. After about, let's say, 10 minutes or so, you hear a knock at each of your doors about two seconds after each other. And you hear a voice coming from the other side, and it's Tom. And he's like, all right, guys, I uh, hope everybody had a good sleep, but uh, it's time to get a move on. We're going to do some uh, briefing in the uh, banquet room. We'll all have breakfast. Um, we're getting it from the uh, the diner next door. Um, meet downstairs in about five minutes. I'll be there in six. Okay. But I don't say that, but I will show up in six. When he ends up in the banquet room, I'm already in there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> like you left before he even came out? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, you head downstairs towards the banquet room, fashionably late, apparently, some of you. Yes. You, you, your camera does not want to see you as a person. <laughs> not a person. Um, as soon as you turn your head, you disappear. <laughs> and confirm, not a person. Fair. All right. You start, so, not a person. <laughs> all right, everybody, quiet. Um... So, you head downstairs. Uh, Charlie, you're already there as Tom comes down the stairs. And he's like, oh, was is there another en entrance? Is there another exit that I'm unaware of? I, I've been up for an hour already. I, all right, then. Um, well, um, enjoy. Uh they are providing us with a nice meal, Evelyn. Um, she actually owns the diner and the uh, lodge here, so right side by side with each other, and it's a nice little, nice little treat for us. Uh, while we're eating breakfast, we can kind of go over what uh, what some of our tips are for our first little search here. I say Sounds little, good. but I'm hoping it's the big time, you know. The rest of you if come one down. Don't go to the movies. The rest of you. Oh, your voice changer's not on. Just to let you know. I was just like, wait, he's got a really deep voice. <laughs> he hit puberty. <laughs> he hit puberty overnight. Uh, okay, so you all filter in one by one, slowly but surely, entering the room. Uh, laid out in front of you is the typical, uh, like, farmer's type breakfast. You got your hash browns, you got your eggs, you got your bacon and sausage. Um, and they're all laid out on the uh, platters in front of you guys. I don't. I don't think that was for us. Uh, huh? You came through, but I don't think it was for us. It was me. Correct. Have we met each other yet? Uh, you would have all met at the airport, but you can reintroduce yourself if you feel like it. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna head to the table and grab a plate of food. Grab some coffee. Uh, okay. So, I was just saying speak up. Okay. And Charlie's the only one down, or is everybody down there now? I was saying you were filtering in one by one, so it's like you all would show up eventually. Okay. I'm the last one to wander in. Okay. Right. I'll say, I'll go over and say hi to Charlie and re reintroduce myself. Hi. I'm Maxine. I met you the other day. Was that yesterday? <laughs> would have been, yeah, yesterday. Okay. <laughs> Uh, actually no technically not because it would have been saturday this is now the 22nd of january so it's been a couple days yeah. okay oh by the way i don't think i mentioned this in our intro but this campaign takes place right now um january 22nd 2024 is the date we are starting 
So does a week take place in between every game? No, that's that's where we're going to run into some issues is the date's going to be similar, but a little different. OK, so uh, Charlie Maxine has just introduced herself again. Uh, yeah, we met a couple days ago. Yeah, but I, it seemed very brief, so I just thought I'd... It's like, now we're all working together, I guess. So, have you well, been down here for a long time? Uh, we came in on the same plane. No, 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 no. Talking I mean about downstairs. Down in... yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, not too long, just hour or so yes I'm not always an early riser myself but yes good to know yeah being in the military kind of pounds it into you okay so what did you do in the military he signed an NDA yeah <laughs> 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 Uh, nice. I was in the infantry, but can't really discuss what we were doing over there. Okay, nope. That's just curious, that's all. Is there anybody else downstairs yet? Um, yeah, like like I said, they are all showing up as they go. So let's go ahead and say Victor walks in. I don't know. Victor's face is uh, full of food right now. In in real life, both. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then uh, the kid walks in. You see why it walked through the door. Hi, is it Wyatt? Nice to meet you. We're gonna do a test. And hey, see it how works. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Hello. She, he lost his she, puberty. she had not heard your voice that way before. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. This is laughing off camera. Yeah. No, I guess not in game. Not in character. <laughs> hey, calm Sorry. down. Sorry. Okay. You know, I think we had the discussion that if we want this to be horror, we none of us can leave character. Yeah, Sorry. it's fine. Sorry. Yes. We we haven't really gotten into that point yet, End so scene. just chill. We'll be fine. We'll get there. Yeah. God. To be fair, we Why all are breaking in our way. characters. You know what? It's because that's the time that they're serving breakfast, Wyatt. You're getting free food. Okay. You're not wrong. No, I, I get it, Wyatt. It's it's early. It's like like I was just telling Charlie, I don't I don't like it. Maxine, out. you have no idea what this kid has been like the past two weeks. Okay. It's like calm down, Tom. I'm sure he's not that it's... bad. Is All he right, gonna you'll be find an out. issue with the security of the group? I I we've had a discussion and I don't believe so. Isn't that right, Why Everyone here on the crew is wonderful, and I'm so happy to be here, and there's no one else in the world I would rather be. After this sound, conversation, I'm like clearly yeah. keeping a closer eye on Wyatt. <laughs> he seems fine. I'm sure we can... I'm sure we can help, Tom. Alright. Okay. So, uh, then Charlie walks in. What? Charlie? Char not there. Charlie. Sorry. Frankie. I gotta get used to everybody's names. They walk in, like, hitting a vape pen. And go straight to, like, where the food is, and they, like... They're holding a piece of toast in their mouth while they're, like, filling a plate with other stuff. Are you saying hi to Frankie? Yes. Hi, Frankie. Sorry, I was just... I was just drinking my coffee. <laughs> hi, Frankie. I'm... I don't know if you remember, I'm... I'm, uh, Maxine. Did you have a good sleep last night? Eh. 
they're like talking to, they're like responding to you while still like a piece of toast is just like hanging out of their mouth yeah like the full slice and they've got like a plate um all right so once everybody um gets all reacquainted and everything finishes their food uh we're gonna do a quick briefing does that sound good for everyone i'm good i'm gonna lean into why it's here and just go i'd rather be in bed too and like plop down why is currently not in the discord but i'm sure he would have a response i think he's testing his uh voice yeah. thing oh i mean he is in discord it's just not our discord oh fair enough yeah he's uh he's going solo <laughs> uh i think now you might be able to talk to victor oh Victor, victor's finally done eating yeah sorry about that i'm so hungry i've been up for hours uh, doing the, some initial scouting and stuff well, I know, Charlie, uh, Char charlie's been up for a while too he said you guys are early risers well, not usually, but, uh, you know, with uh, this being the first day of shooting and stuff, I just want to make sure everything's, uh, you know, we got our surroundings kind of figured out is all. Well, it's going well, to take everybody. Sense. Go ahead. Sorry. No, that makes sense. Um, it's going to take a while for us to map out everything. The Nahani Valley is quite large. Um, but yes, we will definitely have the place scouted out by the end of our show. I'm sorry, I totally just spaced out there for a second. What did you just say? I'd also I... rather be still in bed. She whispered that to you. Did, did they. You, did you, yeah, sorry, they whispered that to you. Did you hear that? I didn't expect a response, it's fine. Okay. I just wasn't sure if why I could hear. Uh, yeah, can you not hear me? I just did, yes. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, now that we have um, all had our feast, thank you again, Evelyn. That was great. Um, Evelyn comes in, starts clearing the dishes. Do you remember what Evelyn looks like, everyone, or do I have to remind you? I remember she was good looking. Throw it on the stream. Uh, on the stream? Brunette, I think, or redhead. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm the only really one watching it. Me. Uh, I mean, I'm in there too. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. I don't know which one's which, so. <laughs> uh, this one is Evelyn. Um, so Evelyn Sol O'Sullivan. Um, she is. Yeah, she, that's what she looks like. She's a woman in her late 30s, warm auburn hair, has loose waves around her shoulders, green eyes, and a big smile because she's in the hospitality industry, so she can't get away with not having a smile. Oh, I got to mute those again because uh, if I'm going to be doing that, I need to get rid of those. No, not sound settings. Sorry, everyone. Um system sounds okay all right she comes in she's like oh no problem guys it's it was a pleasure serving all of you i'm super happy to have you and please if you need anything else just let me know um for the most part i'm going to be next door i do a lot of work at the uh diner however if anybody needs to check in or anything there's a doorbell that rings uh that's on the counter over there um you can ring it and it'll alert me in the diner so um yeah Hope everybody has a great rest of your day and uh, enjoy your mysteries. Bye. Thank you, Maxine. The food is very sorry. delicious. I'm, I'm, I'm Maxine. It. I'm Evelyn. <laughs> oh, I'm Evelyn, Maxine. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you, Evelyn. And uh, no thanks, Maxine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, guys. Uh, time to kind of get down to business a little bit here. Um, 
Are you guys, are we all good? Are we all ready? Uh, were you able to get uh, all the equipment I asked you to get? Uh, yes, we have all your all of your equipment. Um, some of it might still be shipping in, but we have a majority of it. Excellent. I'm mostly concerned about the comms. Oh yes, we do have communications with everybody. Uh, long range radios, I believe, is the majority of what you asked for. Are those the ones that go uh, badoop? Sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. just, just, just checking. Yes, uh, it does go Badoop. I did just check. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, do you mind if I pass everybody out uh, their their uh, walkie-talkie? Everybody's going to get go bags uh, once we're done with the meeting here. It's going to have oh, okay. their supplies Good. that they're going to need while they're out in the wilderness. Um, the music got a little too intense, um, so my apologies. <laughs> Uh, did GPS and satellite communications come in yet? Uh, satellite communications are still on their way. Uh, we'll be getting satellite phones and everything for everyone. Um, but we do have GPS. Um, we also have GPS trackers in order to help us try and find the monsters that we're looking for. Uh, however, we do have GPS just uh, locate locators for our employees as well good good all right so over the what form are these gps in they are things that go on your clothes wyatt yours Don't is worry. going to be sewn in <laughs> it'll be sewn in so you can't lose it it's a chip okay all right uh, so, we have, over the past mm, about three or so months, been noticing some repeat offenders when it comes to these happenings. One actually is happening at our, basically where we are right now. This is a news report from a uh, station based in Fort Simpson um, there's just a video here that we can watch and as he turns around his laptop screen you see an anchor on the uh, local news and she says good evening Glacier Ridge um, tonight we bring you reports of persistent power outages at the Nahani Lodge leaving guests in the dark Witnesses describe strange occurrences coinciding with these blackouts, such as flickering lights and mysterious whispers. While some speculate on the supernatural, officials are, are investigating potential electrical issues. Residents are advised to exercise caution during these temporary disruptions, and we will continue to keep you updated on any developments. So, there are a couple things to note in there, mainly the uh, flickering lights and mysterious whispers. There's plenty of different beans that can cause that type of thing, so just keep an eye out. Um, this one here is just a news article, and he pulls out like uh, a paper, but on said paper is like a picture of a newspaper that obviously has been printed out from online. Uh, the date on the newspaper says December 3rd. Oh, sorry, the original one was November 17th, 2023. November what? What was that? November what? Uh, 17th, 2023. Okay. Um, then, yeah, the newspaper article says December 3rd, 2023. Uh, and it's just an article. Uh, our investigative team ventured into the eerie halls of the abandoned mill today, responding to reports of unexplained phenomena. Witnesses have spoken of mysterious lights flickering in the distance and strange, wh strange whispers echoing through the empty corridors. As investigators explore, early signs point toward a potential electrical malfunction as the source of these enigmatic occurrences. We will be providing in-depth analysis as our team delves further into this peculiar mystery. See, this one kind of stood out to me, but 
because there were no further updates. That was the last report. Why would they say that they're going to investigate further and then just stop? I think they're hiding something and we're going to find out what that is. Do we know if the crew's all accounted for? Our crew or their crew? Theirs. I don't know. We have to find out who the crew actually was. Colonel Mustard in the library with a lamp. This isn't helpful. I think it'd be the knife. Anyway. Uh, one last report, and he turns his laptop around again. Uh, this one was actually just from uh, somebody who does YouTube around town. Um, she uh, she's keep trying out for to be get like become a news anchor, you know. So she's putting her portfolio forward. Um, so uh, you she turns he turns the screen around again, and she starts talking. Breaking news from Main Street, where residents report an unexpected sensation of vibration in the air. Witnesses describe a subtle, almost imperceptible tremor causing unease among the community. Authorities are on site assessing potential seismic activity or technological malfunctions that could be behind this peculiar phenomenon. We encourage residents to remain vigilant and stay indoors until further information becomes available. Stay tuned as we bring you real-time updates on this unfolding situation. But we didn't posted? get any real-time updates. What was that, sorry? When was that posted? January 4th, 2024. This sounds the like low frequencies from what? a generator. Was there a name? There was no name, no. Okay. No YouTube channel handle? <laughs> Uh, sure, give me a second. Um. Oh, I don't want noise. Thank you. Um, do, do, do. Wow, I didn't think it would be this hard. Uh, the bright side of Glacier Ridge. So, as I said, we didn't get any further updates. Why? Did she get shut down? No one knows. So that's kind of what we're here to try and figure out. Um, so we're going to need our researchers, our lead investigator. Um, we need you to go out and ask some questions. Uh, maybe introduce yourselves to some people around town. Uh, maybe go to some of the different store owners, see if they've noticed anything, um, and then go from there. Maybe she just decided it wasn't a story. It's possible, but that's not the point of our show now, is it, Wyatt? No. Exactly. So what do we do? We search. Hold on, it'll come to me. It doesn't mean you have to talk to him like one. I'm going oh, to talk right. to we search. I'm going to talk to all of you like this if you continue to question things. I just Isn't need things part done. Of our job, question things. Yeah. Hush. 
I need you to question other people. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what we know. And that's all I know. You're to go out, question things, come back to me, and I do more research into it from that. If you're doing the research, then why did you hire researchers? It's a little bit different my part of the job. I'm going to find you sources that you can go and investigate with. You so, just did that. So yeah, I found I you some sources. You what was that? I'm just trying to understand where you're coming from. I'm the one who's paying for I'm everybody to there. be here. I'm aware. So uh, this is my part of the job. I'm finding you clues and different uh, sources and things to search into. And then that's your job is to search into it. Aye, aye, Captain. I'm gonna just like close my book and like walk away, grab a something and shove it in my mouth. A croissant. Sure. All right. Does everybody know their roles? You know what you're going to do. Sure. All right. Aye, aye, Captain. I feel like I'll mainly be focusing on the kid. <laughs> I mean, are you saying that out loud or is that just you? I'll say it out loud. <laughs> I mean, just keep him out of trouble. Make sure that he's recording um, every step of the way. And that's pretty much all we need him to do. So are we sticking together? Are you wanting us to stick together? Or are we all... I everybody is going stuff, but... everybody is going to have their own body cams okay. why it is here to uh get like the wide shots and things okay do uh oh me God. and victor have body cams too or are we just off to the side no you're just there you are just going to be there to make sure protect. that's what i thought um that was uh, not in character <laughs> yeah no you guys are there to protect that's your job. That's what I thought. So, on that YouTube video, can we, like, look to see, like, when the channel started, that type of thing? Like, where... Yeah, uh, it's been around for a couple of years. Okay. Um, I would, like... I'm gonna get a printout of, like, the video with her face in it. If like there's no name shot. listed on there, I'm gonna ask people if they know this woman. Uh, oh, whatever you want. Okay, I'll give you the picture. Um, one second. Okay, so the picture, her profile picture, is this. Uh, where are you sending all these pictures? Oh, sorry. They're on the stream, but I'll I'll send them to Discord here. Um. Okay, so do you want me to send the picture of Evelyn too, or do you not care about that? Oh, you can send it because then I know who I'm dealing with. Okay, so Evelyn is the owner of the diner and also the hotel. Yes, I know who she is. I just don't know what okay, she looks well, like. Well, I'm just letting you know, just in case you didn't hear. Uh, and then this is the picture of the YouTuber. YouTube person. I wonder if there's a way I can get it set up to make sharing pictures on the stream easier for you. Um, the way I'm doing it is fine. It's just well, I mean, so it's like actually in the picture window and all of that. Uh, like I said, it's fine because I'm only going to display it for like two seconds. Fair so, enough. this is the picture that you get. So is everything like kind of within walking distance or do we have you a can or? you can walk around this town however we have provided a van uh, Victor is the only one who 
uh, has the license to drive the van with air brakes, so he will be the driver. Okay. And so that, is only because, that is only because that is only because Victor <laughs> is supposed to come with a van. Interesting fact: air have a vehicle having air brakes only matters if it's a trailer. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> this is an insurance-related thing. Don't worry, it's insurance-related. Um. I might just go grab my board out of my room. Your skateboard? Or is it a longboard? I think it'd be more of a longboard. Yeah, longboards became more popular, I think. How old is... This is out of character. How old is Frankie? How old is Frankie? Like, mid-20s. Okay. How old is everyone? And they're like, cool and happening. Super uh, cool I'm, and happening. <laughs> I'm late yeah. 20s. Maxine like just last... Maxine just decided to announce that she was 57. <laughs> by calling Frankie cool and happening. <laughs> <laughs> She's cool and... Or they're cool and hip. They're hip and jive. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So they are mid-20s. Yeah, uh, Charlie said late 20s, right? Yep. Late 20s. Victor's 92. 20. Victor's early 40s. And I think I'm like... 92. I feel like I'm like late 20s, early 30s. Based on the picture? Based on the picture. That's fine. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, you guys can hit the streets now something that I I was watching kind of like some things that need to be known before you kind of get into the game here and one of the things was splitting the party is a hundred percent okay in this game so if you guys do want to split the party we can split the party okay. cool I was already doing that cool whether it was okay or not well <laughs> it's not so much the okay it's just I know like coming from D D, it's like never split the party so i just want to be clear that they I actually was, recommend it in this game i was thinking about oh, going to the oh, diner Victor, do you want to keep an eye on the kid or should i well it doesn't matter to me charlie wherever whatever works um i'm if we're all splitting up then uh i want to stay within close distance so i can if anybody calls for help you know they're there so if you want to look after wyatt that's fine so I'll make it easy on you. I'll look after me. Y'all look after them. He's gonna be a problem. What did you say, Maxine? I was thinking of going to the diner next door and seeing if there's like any locals around and question them about like because it's been happening at the the lodge, hasn't it? Like, see it's if anybody. It's been happening at the lodge, yeah. There, yeah. there's been power outages around town. And the but... diner's connected to the lodge. The diner and the lodge aren't connected, but they are like side by side. Okay. Um. I guess no. It would make more sense that they would be connected because to get food from one place to the other, you'd have to go outside. So yeah, it'd be yeah. more sense to like they built a walkway. They are two separate buildings. But they built like an addition that connects the two. Yeah. Okay. That's where I'm thinking of going. I don't care if anybody comes with me or not, but I'm just going to go and see if there's anybody to talk to around there. Okay. And just a reminder um, Wyatt, today, if you want to catch some B roll or whether you want to go with people, that's up to you. I figured I'd go get some wide angles of the town. Not a bad idea. It's actually a very pretty town. Okay, so... Um, I'm probably gonna go roll around to, like... Whatever news station, newspaper, whatever's in town. First. Uh, the only news place in town is known as the GR Press. Oh, gonna... Which is which is where your news clipping came from. Because oh, I really gonna... don't want to be chasing uh, Frankie as she's as they are boarding. I will stick around Maxine. Okay. 
Wait, does the kid already have the GPS back. on them? Everybody has the GPS attached to their, like, go bags. And we've got the go bags. The go bags were given to you. So, so what is it? That? What is in the go bags is a thermal blanket, a flare, uh, your uh, long-distance radios, uh, which go up to five kilometers, by the way. What is that in freedom units? I don't know. Um, what else? Uh, some, like, rations. Your GPS tracker is attached to the bag. Um, and then uh, some water, basically. So stuff that, yeah. if you do get lost, you can survive and also have something to alert people. So yeah, I'm going to stick around the... Uh place we are but i'm gonna keep an eye on all of the gps to see if anything looks suspicious with any of the people being tracked okay uh also uh wyatt as you are leaving the hotel your mind goes back to a dream that you had last night. Uh, in this dream, Glacier Ridge morphed into a chilling nightmare as the moon cast an eerie glow on the snow-covered town. Um, a creature emerged from the darkness, kind of covered in ice with piercing red eyes. Um, its silhouette started to twist and kind of dance around and it seemed like it was very happy with this happening um the air was very thick um and cold and it seeped right into your bones um as you went further into the night the shadowy dance started spreading all throughout town and the um What's the word I'm looking for? Like the shadows that everything cast started morphing into their own little creatures and different things as well. Uh, the townsfolk, they were covered with perpetual dread. Um, they started becoming puppets in this kind of dance. Um, as the creature was kind of, this whole thing was kind of a joke to it, it started to turn sinister as it started... Uh, objects around town started levitating and shadows started taking on a life of their own and like dark creatures started wandering the town um, in the midst of all of this it had a giant smile and started like whispering different things uh, sending shivers down your spine um, and then yeah as the dream concluded it kind of was just a thick unsettling stillness in the air What? Okay. Nice little dream. Okay. I have a drone. Would I be wanting him to play around with that or are you talking Wyatt yeah I mean that's kind of up to you now isn't yeah, it yeah I'm just like I don't know whether I trust this kid yet with uh with a drone but... oh wait I have a motorcycle this kid's uh, going into town let's go ahead and say that you don't have it yet just so, just we'll go with that like things are gonna get slowly provided yeah. for you as you go through I just didn't remember having that okay yeah I was assuming today I have my feet okay. I hope you have your feet <laughs> we just found out Charlie's in a wheelchair <laughs> great for security yeah it's one of those off-road wheelchairs so it'll be fine yeah it's an off-road electric wheelchair if the battery dies I'm super screwed <laughs> 
If I could whistle, I would. As a built-in generator. <laughs> okay, so uh, Frankie, you're heading to the GR press? I am. I'm rolling that way. Okay, so as you're heading over there, you see uh, a building uh, that stands. It's kind of a modest building, but it's in the heart of Glacier Ridge. Looks a little bit older. Um, it's kind of weathered brick uh, exterior. Um, kind of shows you how old this town is. Um, and a large sign with bold letters out front that says GR Press. It's got large windows, but the curtains inside are faded. Um, and you can see inside and... Oh, I meant to ask, did we get, like, IDs or something so people aren't just, like... No. Cool. If, if you... The, that's kind of the thing, is, like, if you think about an internet show, none of them have IDs. They just go up to people and start asking questions, you know? All right. All right. Sticking with Frankie right now. Up to you. Are you going in? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna head in. I'll like pr I'll prop my board up against the wall by the door and head in. Okay. Uh, so when you go in, you see there are a few employees that are kind of wandering around town and stuff. Um, they're doing their thing, uh, running papers through a press. Um, it's also like they have a print shop and fact the only fax machine in town as well so some people do just come to it for that um but yeah the interior is basically main room is worn desks with stacks of papers typewriters uh some notepads and stuff and you see different things uh framed front pages showcasing different events from history as well nothing there's no front page stuff that would stand out to you in regards to like a monster mystery, but there's like uh, founder of the town who finally passes or passes away. Um, there's different stuff like that. Not finally. I shouldn't have said finally. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a bad, bad word, <laughs> word choice. That was the copy that got thrown out. Yeah. Uh, as you enter, nobody really pays attention to you for the first little bit, so you have a chance to look around if you want to. They don't have like a bell on the door, so it's not like a big hullabaloo when everybody when somebody walks in. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna just kind of wander a little bit and like scan around, kind of like put eyes on like where back rooms would be or, you know, stuff like that and then um after a few minutes I'm gonna just I'll saddle up next to one of their one of the employees desks, like someone who's like uh, well, as, as you're kind of looking around, you do catch the eye of somebody, um this person um and she walks up to you pretty quickly and she's like i'm i'm sorry can i help you yeah i actually um sorry um bs um i'm with the film crew in town i just a few questions I wanted to ask you guys. Um, well, I mean, go for it. Um, okay. What can I help you um, with? Well, first off, I'm gonna pull out the hippie chicks picture. I'm gonna. Do you happen to know? That's her? rude. <laughs> hippie, like chick. hippie chick. She's uh, got a flower crown in so? her hair. She looks like a hippie chick. Maybe she went to Coachella. Okay. Uh -huh. well, if you're, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, of course. 
Um, is there a name anywhere I can find her by any chance? I mean, good luck finding her, but I can give you a name. Uh, you're not going to be able to get access to them anytime soon. Uh, that's Sophia Albatross. And why won't I be able to get access to them anytime soon? Well, the big scandal that they just had, they're kind of closed off right now. Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of heard about that. All right. Um... Well, at least I know who it was. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot to send the picture to Discord as well. <laughs> um, you guys released an article about a month ago, a month and a half ago, about the abandoned mill. Oh, yeah, that was me. Uh, okay. And you recall that the writer of the story's name was Victoria Monroe. Oh, so you're... Monroe. Yeah, I'm, I'm Vicky. Okay. Um... Well, your article said that there was gonna be updates but there was only the one article why um I am not at liberty to discuss that okay. I uh, thought it would be a great story and I was told otherwise okay um the crew that was investigating are they all accounted for yeah none of them are lost or anything um no injuries no uh it was olivia i think who went in there and then a couple of uh the guides around town as well um there was uh hazel and edmund went in as well just to make sure nobody got lost or anything okay And you guys said it was an electrical malfunction? That is, is that what right? they said, yes. Is that what you believe? I don't know, to be honest. I think there's been a little bit too much electrical disturbance to make sense after we got all of our wiring taken care of. Um, I mean, sure, back... I don't know, about a year ago, that would have made a lot of sense. We were all running on generators. We had really poor power running through the buildings. Um, once a week, everything would shut down and we'd have to run off our generators. But unfortunately, uh, I don't think that's the case anymore after we got all of our new power pools put in. So all of this happened after the power pools were put in? The 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 few different things yes like we did have obviously electrical malfunctions before but the fact that we're still getting them occasionally now and every time something happens they're just blaming electrical malfunction that makes no sense to me uh, this is an old building did you guys after the power pools were put in anything here I mean, all of our buildings have been brought up to code. Yeah, but any flickering lights, any weird noises, any... I mean, a little bit, but like, you see we only are here 9 to 5, right? We're not here until midnight. You run into that at like the bars and the restaurants and things like that. Okay, what about when you're not at work? Other than the couple of things that are actually on paper. Have you noticed anything weird? Any 
Anything weird out of the corner of your eyes? Anything you can't explain? So this is going to be our first roll. And I'm going to ask you to manipulate someone. Oh boy, okay. Uh, and the reason I'm asking that is because I believe manipulate someone, and if I could freaking find my stuff. Um, manipulate someone, I believe, is what you need to use. Where is it? Hello? Where's my book? There it is. Uh, uh plus charm. No, no, I know, I, know it's person, I know it's plus charm. Hunter. I know it's what plus charm. I need to know. Uh, just let me find it. I'll find it. Give me two seconds. I have it. Here. I have it now. I have it now. Just give me our second roll. Oh yeah, I guess you did the first one, hey. Um, and then hunter reference sheets. Okay, so yeah, uh, manipulate someone is basically trying to give them a reason to tell you, like they making them want to talk to you. Okay. So you're asking a question that she might not want to answer. So that's why I'm making you roll. Okay. So it's how many d6? 2d6. 2d6. Uh, and you roll plus your charm unless you have a move that tells you otherwise. Um, I don't... If you get a plus 12, they'll be our ally for the entire mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I actually think Frankie is charming, I think. Do you have charm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is possible to get a 12 plus. Rare, but possible. I mean, I can't even say that it's rare because the first roll of the campaign was a 12. Really? Yeah, it, why it rolled a 12. Wow. That's not a 12. It's not a 12. Uh, that's... Eight. Eight. So, uh, which is a mixed success. On a seven and nine, they'll do it, but only if you do something for them right now to show that you mean it. Uh, if you ask too much, they'll tell you what, if anything, it would take for them to do it. Right. Um, so, with that, she's like, uh, I mean, not really you kind of just came to town there's not a whole lot i don't know if i can tell you or not i'm not sure um i, I don't think so um the whole point of me being here is to try and figure out stuff and solve it yeah but i mean like what do i get out of the situation i just get my name thrown in the dirt if i end up being wrong i won't name you So, are you just going to list me as an unknown source? What if I am right? If you're right, I can name you and give you credit. If I'm wrong, no one knows it was you. Your reputation as a reporter stays intact. Your reputation as a good reporter stays intact. So I don't think you were wrong, and I don't think it was a bad story. I think there's something there. Okay, so there was one night when I was standing in my own house and I kind of, well, I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the washroom and when I went to the mirror, I was looking at myself for a little bit and some something just caught my eye for a second, but as I was looking at myself, my own face changed to kind of like a creepy, icy looking face with red eyes. And it started like reaching out for me and then I looked away and it went away. As I looked back, there was nothing there. 
kind of like okay. splashed my face with water and it was all gone. That's um, the only time it happened? I've never had it happen again. And then I kind of heard like, after it happened, I kind of heard like giggling. But that's it. That's all I've seen. Like a child giggle or? No, more like a animalistic type giggle. Kind of like a hyena, you know? They kind of sound like somebody laughing, but not at the same time. Okay. Do you know if anyone else that has had anything weird like this happen? I have never brought this up with anybody. I've never questioned it, so no. Okay. I just put it to me just waking up from my sleep and i i don't think it actually happened you know like just scratch that i don't think that was it didn't it's not a thing like it was just you know sleep sleep vision you know sleep vision usually happens when you're asleep but that's the thing is i had just woken up so i was still tired and i was going back to bed like it was like 2 a.m sometimes our mind plays tricks on us right that's what you're yes. gonna say exactly but sometimes our mind also tries to rationalize things that we don't understand i mean fair oh, but it could be anything. exactly could be anything if it is anyway, nothing if it's nothing i never worry. told you anything if it's exactly. something i'm i was the first one noted Frankie, by the way. It's nice to meet you. I, I already introduced myself. I'm Vicky. I realized I didn't, and that was kind of my bad. Um, well, I'm sure you're busy. I'm not gonna take your whole day from you. I mean, yeah, we got some work to do, so it, it'd be probably best that you take off for a bit if I uh, else, we're at the um... <laughs> if you want to talk more I'll be at Turner's pub later but that's only if you want to talk more well hopefully I see you there have a good one you too all right who's next Okay, well, I guess I'm going. Unless they're going to actually see anything. What do you mean? Like the guys that are wandering around. Everybody's wandering around. Like you split up. You all split up. I think Charlie said he was going with me. Charlie, did you say you're going with uh, Maxine? Well, she's actually. staying at the lodge. She was staying at the lodge to look into stuff. Well, no. I was I was going next door into the, like into the other building. Yeah, so I'll be hanging around a lodge, keeping an eye on the GPS okay. of everyone. So I'm with her, but not. Yeah, I'll I'll be with her. It's easy enough. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So you're going to the lodge. Yeah, and Evelyn knows like exactly why we're there, correct? Yeah, she was excited about it. Okay. Here, uh, Charlie, as you're going here, here, take this. So I hand Charlie the cell phone that has all the GPS stuff into it, so he can track it on his cell phone. He doesn't have to stay at the laptop. I was kind of assuming both of us would have one already. Yeah, this is a really good one. <laughs> Well, thanks. You're welcome. Yours is a crappy one. Here's a better one. Okay, so I'm going to go over into the diner. Okay. And I'm actually... How busy is Evelyn? Like, could I talk to her for a minute? Or? It's still morning time. Um, it's about 10 o'clock at this point. Um, 
So you guys, it, it's kind of like the mid mid morning to afternoon lull. Mm -hmm. Like there's nobody really coming in. So okay, so I am gonna look for Evelyn and just have a little chat with her for about well whatever. Um. Okay. So you head over, and she's just wiping down a counter, and she's like, oh, um, was there an issue? Did you guys need something? I didn't hear the doorbell. No, 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 no. I, uh, I, we're just kind of trying to get a lay of the land, and it's like, you know, obviously why we're here. So it's like, I'm trying to see if there's anyone that I could talk to. I don't know if anybody's here in the, in the, uh, diner that... You know, perhaps has seen something. I don't know if you've heard any rumors, like if anybody's talking about it here in the diner, but I'm just wondering whether there's anybody that you would suggest off the top of your head for me just to talk with and see if I can find out a little bit more information, see what direction I should be going in. And it's like, because I also would like to talk to the authorities in town, but it's like, is there any is there any suggestions from you? You know, since you're a, a an owner in the area, a business person in the area, I figured you'd, you know, have some have some ideas to who we could talk to locally. Um, well, I mean, there's always people talking, you know. Um, I know Cass usually has some funny stories. Um. I think Charlie, um, she she usually usually has some stuff to talk about. She's got a lot of knowledge of the area based on the fact she takes pictures of it all. Um, Charlie works at the press. No, uh, Charlie works at uh, her own. She has her own uh, art studio. Oh, okay. Um, we get a lot of tourism and hunters and stuff in town here based on the fact that we're right beside the national park. So we try to cater to, you know, certain types of folks. Um, and who's this Cass? Like, where, where is she? Or is uh, it she's, she owns Blackwood's Apothecary. Kind of like the, the pharmacy in town. Yeah. Heard, pharmacy and then she does her own stuff as well. Like natural stuff? Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know Finn is always looking into like weird stuff. Kind of actually similar to what you guys like. Um, so if you want to talk to Finn, um, honestly, he's probably out and about. So I wouldn't get... Uh, does, he, does he work or is he retired or what? Um, sorry, one second now. Okay, there's Finn. Um, no, he's a kid. Oh, okay. But he's into, you know, mysteries and things like that. Things of the yeah strange mysteries. Like I said, he's probably doing similar to things to what you're doing right now, to be honest. So, okay. Uh, if you if you find him, you. So he's not in school. Um, he probably should be. But we don't really have a strict school around here. Okay. Um, we only have a population of about 500 people. So we kind of, we have a, te a couple teachers in town and they will tutor the kids themselves. Would his parents be okay with us talking to him or? Uh, you might have to ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. But um, Aria is his mom. She's the local librarian. And so you're saying Cass, Charlie, Finn, and... There, I mean, you can talk to anybody, I'm sure. All, all, everybody's had some sort of encounter. Well, speaking of which, because it's like, that's what we had read, was it's like stuff had been happening at the, at the lodge, too. So it's like, do you mind me asking you some questions? Like, are you okay with that, or...? I mean, sure. Um, I try to kind of 
keep it on the down low a little bit because I don't like talking bad about my business. No, 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 that makes sense. It's like, of course, it's like you're trying to draw a business in. It's like you don't want to scare anybody away. But at the same time, too, this type of thing sometimes draws people in. Like, you, like, you know, case in point, we're here. So it's like, what are you... What kind of things were happening? It's like, has this been recent? Is this ongoing? Or uh, it's been on and off for the past few months, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, sometimes the you'll hear the odd whisper. I it th honestly think it's probably just kids playing pranks. The power flickering is a little bit weird, but we get storms and stuff here all the time, which can mess up the power lines and stuff. Uh, but yeah, kids just whispering in the back alleys or something or through an open window. I don't really believe in all this stuff, but people claim it's real, so you never know. Mm -hmm. And you, yeah. Like I said, power flickering, storms, wind, anything can cause that type of thing. Um, and then, yeah, whispers, cold spots, but I mean... We're in the Northwest Territories. Canada alone is cold, and then you go further north, and that's where we are. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Because it's like, even for myself, it's like I like to I like to find what's what's really happening. And, yeah, a lot of times it is, it is somebody fooling around or trying to fool people. But it's like, you know, that's that's our job is to get to the bottom of this. So... Well, I mean, if you can get to the bottom of it, that would be great because I'm tired of people telling me that it's some weird monster all the time. So when you catch the kids who are just whispering in the back alleys, you give them a piece of your mind and tell them that I'm coming for them too. All right, yeah, that sounds good, Evelyn. So is there anybody in here right now that we can talk, like, that I could talk to? Or uh, There's a couple of, like, retirees just drinking some coffee. Yeah. Nothing major. Well... Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll go and chat with them and see. Can I get a cup of coffee and I'll? Oh yeah, for uh, sure. Uh, so she pours you a cup. Do you okay. need any milk, sugar, or anything? No, nope. black is good. All right. 